Hello. <laughs> this week is always a little bit of a weird one for me. Every single year for the past 17 or so years. Because uh, this is the week that I that I started Silicon Florist. And you're watching me on YouTube. You might not even know what Silicon Florist is. Uh, Silicon Florist started as a blog in early August of 2007. And, and as the story goes, I sat up in bed one night at 2 a.m., just kind of with this epiphany, I'm like, there are these tech blogs like TechCrunch that are talking about all these awesome startups, but nobody's talking about all the awesome stuff I see happening in Portland. You know, I was a founder. I was working on my own startup, talking to a lot of other people who were building their own startups, was involved in the open source community, which was really big back then. And I, you know, it just kind of hit me that like what I do is marketing, marketing communications, promotions, those kind of things. And I was like, well, if I see all these amazing startups in Portland and nobody's talking about them as much as I think they should, then why don't I open source my marketing communications and, and promote those companies and what they're doing in Portland? And so that's what I decided to do. Now, I thought I might grab the URL Silicon Forest which is what the region has been known as since the early 80s because of a lot of the work in semiconductors and printed circuit board design and all those kind of things. So I was like, oh yeah, perfect. Silicon Forest, that's what I'll call it. And so I jumped to my computer and went to register the URL only to find that it had been taken. <laughs> and given that it was in the wee hours of the morning and I was somewhat punchy. I was like, well, there's the Silicon Forest and then there's Portland. That's the Rose City. So what if we combine those two and make it Silicon Florist? And lo and behold, that URL was available. So I went ahead and registered it. I kind of started working on the WordPress install finally got it configured over the next couple of days and then started posting about what I was seeing in the Portland startup community. And that, as they say, is history. So 17 years ago this week, started Silicon Florist and I've been posting pretty consistently every week ever since then. Uh, it's up over 5,000 posts or something. And uh, something that I just like, it's like a bad habit now. Like I can't help it, but I really enjoy it. And I really enjoy all of the amazing people I get to meet and all the products that are being built here and how the Portland startup community has changed and evolved over that time. And, and, you know, it, it remains just a really just a passion project for me. Like I just love Portland. I love the startups here. And I believe Portland startup founders don't get the respect that they deserve. So if I can just do a little to get them some more visibility and granted, like I write about throughout Oregon and of course, Vancouver, Washington, since it's in the Portland Metro, but you know, for the most part, it's been pretty focused on Portland startups and, and events and tech and stuff going on in the community. Even if you've never read Silicon Florist, even if you've never visited Silicon Florist, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I've started doing the YouTube so that we can connect and I can chat with you on a regular basis because this is really my ability, whether you're on YouTube or listening to the podcast, my ability to take that content I'm capturing on Silicon Florist and make it more accessible to more people, make it so that more Portland founders are getting the respect they deserve and ensuring that the startups here are getting effective promotion of the awesome products they're building. I'm sorry about my voice. Like it, I've got a little frog in my throat because I've spent time, you know, outside uh, going to meetings and, and running to and fro and those kind of things. But, uh, if, if folks don't know, if you're not in Oregon or the Pacific Northwest, it's wildfire 
season. So there's a lot of smoke in the air. The air quality is just awful today. So like getting to the point where your lungs start hurting and apparently it's affected my throat. It's definitely affected the sunshine. It seems like a very like reddish orangish haze around town. But I apologize for my voice not being on the top of its game. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. So maybe, you know, maybe it's a more sultry voice this week. A little, little lower, a little, little gruffer. Are you making your voice deeper? No. But hopefully you can put up with that. And I apologize, but I will try and power through and get you all of this news that you need. 17 years. It's crazy that I've been doing it for 17 years. And uh, one particular shout out of which I just want to make note uh, because it's a, a mentor of mine. She was hugely influential, has always been super helpful to me. A woman named Linda Weston, who uh, now runs a consultancy, but for 17 years, she ran the Oregon Entrepreneurs Network. So OEN, as many of you in the region likely know and recognize that name, Linda was in charge of that organization for 17 years. So 17 years was really one of those milestones that I was pursuing because I knew if Linda could be so enthusiastic and so involved in that work for that long, then I would do my best to do the same. And now I've, I've finally managed to attain that milestone. So I'm happy about that. I hope, <laughs> I sincerely hope that you're happy about that, or at least maybe not perturbed about that. So um, glad you're here. Glad that uh, I, I got to share that birthday with you and um, looking forward to, you know, just showing up again tomorrow and continuing to post on Silicon Florist and continuing to chat with you about what's happening in the Portland startup community for, I don't know, I don't know if I got another 17 years in me, but I'm definitely going to keep going because there's always exciting stuff going on in the Portland startup community. And I'm glad you're part of it and I'm glad you're interested in it. So thank you. Thank you for being along for the ride whether you've been here since August of 2007 or whether you just stumbled upon this, this video, I just, I, I really appreciate it. So thank you, honestly, sincerely. Thanks. It's good to have you here. Look, I know I'm being selfish. Maybe it's cause it's Silicon Florist birthday week. I don't know, but I would like you here every single week, not just Silicon Florist birthday week. So please, subscribe. Just come and hang out. Hang out every week. Talk startups and stuff, but only if you subscribe. So please do that. Okay. Thank you. So last week, you might remember me, and I'll link it up. You might remember me talking about the Oregon Innovation Index for 2024. The Innovation Index is a nationwide global kind of set of criteria that all of the states and the District of Columbia can kind of use to rank innovation within their region. And Oregon participates in it on a regular basis and they release this report and it was great. Like it was great. It was really well written, really approachable. Like I appreciated how easy it was to consume, but uh, you know, you know, our friends with the, with the AI, like, Jason Harris was like, I don't have time to read this whole thing. Will, will chat GPT summarize it for me? And so he did that and he shared that with the Portland startup Slack, which if you're not on the Portland startup Slack, please come join us. Me and 7,000 of your soon to be newest and closest friends are waiting for you on Portland startup Slack. But I digress. Jason Harris ran it through Chad GPT. He's like, here's the summary of what's going on. And Austin Buell, who was inspired by that, said, well, I think I think we can do even more with this. So he went ahead and took took that uh, summary. He took a kind of a model that he was he was thinking about. I'm forgetting the person's name, but I'll definitely link it up in the uh, in the show notes so that you have it. But anyway, he kind of munged those together 
in terms of analysis. And then he went out and used our, our friends at, at Wyzox, used one of their mascots and trained that mascot up. So not only could you get more information and detail about the Oregon Innovation Index for 2024, but you could have a conversation with that AI chatbot about about the findings and like the potential opportunities and and the you know threats and and those kind of things so uh really interesting to take like a static report that you could kind of just read and then be like yeah and and now what and to to take that to an active almost living document through austin's work that really enables anyone to have a much deeper understanding of what that report means, what it could portend, and really opportunities for all of us to better engage in innovation in Oregon. So thank you to Austin for doing that. Thank you to Jason Harris for doing the original summary. And uh, yeah, there's there's the chat bot. I'll link it up if you want to chat with it about that document or, or what it means. I encourage you to do that. And if you come across some interesting findings after talking to that bot, please feel free to share them in comments. I would love to hear what you learned by by chatting with that with that chat bot. Speaking of of Austin, there's another <laughs> another mention of him today because one of the things he and his team, he's the co-founder of, a, you know, kind of like a pseudo agency product development shop. And they came up with this, uh, this product really through their work that is a AI powered branding and marketing template strategy document generating AI thing. Let's just say it's for you to work through this chatbot interaction and coming out the other side, you'll have a marketing strategy, you'll have guidance. You can go back to it on a regular basis and say, this is what's happening. How should we change this? How should we tweak this? It's really less of a static branding strategy document and more a living thinking thing living that you can continue to interact with as the dynamics of the market change it's called blueprint and uh i was really lucky to see it early 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 like really like rudimentary proof of concept mvp stage it's come a long way since then and i'm really excited to see it be out and available to the public especially for people who are like look what i do is build product i don't know how to market that product but i would love to know how to market that product this is one of those things that could be super helpful to you super helpful in just determining the brand for the organization you're trying to build so it's called blueprint it's also on Product Hunt, so you can jump over to Product Hunt and see what other people are saying about it, see what the feedback is, kind of keep an eye on it. But I highly encourage you, if you have a need for branding or marketing or targeting your marketing communications or kind of like helping with your positioning, please check out Blueprint and, uh, and it can probably give you the help that you need. All right. I know that October seems like a ways off. We, we barely just started August. October is like months away. And yet our friends at the Ben Venture Conference are actively planning their 2024 event and trying to find amazing startups like potentially yours to take the stage and pitch their ideas and see if they can land a little capital and a little investment to help those companies continue to grow. But there's one, one problem. You're sitting here watching YouTube instead of doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. Like stay here for a few more minutes. It, you've wasted enough time as it is now. Like, don't worry about <laughs> wasting a few more minutes. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you happen to be watching this on Friday, August 9th, 2024, you're in luck because 
Bend Venture Conference applications have not yet closed. So if you're working on a startup that you'd like to have on stage at BVC, you still have time to get your application in. If you're listening to this after that, it, yeah, it's fine. Maybe next year. Like, you know, the, you can't you can't always win with your startup. Sometimes sometimes you're busy doing other stuff and you miss a deadline or like you're like I don't have time to sit and listen to Rick blather on with that weird smoke affected voice he's got this time uh whatever the case i hope you made the deadline but if you didn't you're cool because you can still go to ben venture conference even if you're not going to be on stage you can still go get the experience see other people pitch and and all those kind of things because ben venture conference tickets are currently on sale and best of all early bird pricing. That's right. So not only can you get a ticket to Ben Venture Conference, you can pay less for the ticket than somebody else who pays later for that ticket. And you know what that is? That's a wise investment. That makes you exactly the type of investor who should be attending Ben Venture Conference or startup or whatever. It's always a great show. Like it's a amazing opportunity to especially if you're in Portland, to get outside of town, hang out with a bunch of startup folks and investors, uh, you know, network, get to meet people that you wouldn't otherwise have the chance to meet in person. Every October, I just hear people raving about the experiences they've had at Ben Venture Conference, and it's now, and it's, I think it's the 21st year this year. So um, if that sounds interesting to you, I highly encourage you to grab your ticket to Bend Venture Conference. It happens October 17th and 18th down in Bend, Oregon, hence the name Bend Venture Conference. Get it? Cool. So um, grab a ticket, uh, maybe see you down there. I might go down again this year. It's been a few years since I've been, but seems like maybe it's time to come back. Maybe I should, maybe I should head up. BVC. And so I'm seriously considering it. Maybe if you go and you're telling me that you go, that'll give me more, even, even more inspiration to, to head down to Bend to hang out then because we're getting the built festival done earlier this year. Usually the built Oregon festival isn't slightly in conflict with BVC, but this year we're doing it like the final, the final event for the built festival is October 4th. So save the date. Like it starts in end of September, ends October 4th, week long event. So my calendar's kind of clear for BBC. So maybe it's maybe it's time to to take another trip down to Bend and and hang out with you. You and me. We can hang out at the event, talk startups and that kind of stuff. May you know, you never can tell. Okay, my raggedy, scratchy voice made it through the episode. I hope your voice is doing okay. Hope you're hanging in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work. What's that? You'd like to listen to an episode where my voice isn't totally thrashed? I've got one of those news stories right here. <laughs> 